everyone, and welcome to Sip and Stitch. I'm so excited that you're here. Happy Friday. Gotta love a good Friday. It has been a long week. I told my kids this morning, I'm like, I can't wait till tomorrow when I don't have to wake up <laughs> at a certain time. <laughs> so I hope you are all doing well. If you're new here, hi, I'm Carly Bell, and I love to get together with you guys every other Friday. Uh, for a machine embroidery tutorial from start to finish that we call Sip and Stitch. And when I started, we did this at night. We had a nice adult beverage, but now I'm doing them in the morning, so I have coffee. <laughs> so bring your beverage of choice, and we are going to make a really fun project. So let me go and check the comments. Hello, Pamela and Mary and Nellie and Tammy, and I see Joe and Norma's here. Thank y'all all for coming. I appreciate it. So lots of fun things to tell y'all about today. I'm very, very excited. Uh, yeah, Joe's like mimosa. Yes, we can we can have mimosas, Joe. I'm I'm down with that. <laughs> um so let's see. Oh, so we have afternoon from the UK, so you can definitely have an adult beverage right now. That is that is a good time. <laughs> All right. Good. I'm so glad y'all are all here. So lots of fun things going on. I'm really excited about today's project. Um, this is something that I've been seeing on Facebook and on um, TikTok, people embroidering with sh fluffy Chanel yarn. And then even locally, we have um, a store. I'm in southern Louisiana um, near New Orleans, and we have a local store called Flirty Girl. And that is like the go-to store for all of the cute um, tops. And we have Mardi Gras going on right now. And I went there shopping for a cute Mardi Gras shirt and they had some with the, the yarn on it. And I think it said queen and it had these big old sequins on the sleeves and everything. It was super cute. And I'm looking, I'm like dissecting it in the store. I'm like, how did they do that? I think I could do that. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. So we are going to jump into that. But before we start, um, a few things I want to tell you about. Um, so I don't know if you remember, if you were with me at the beginning of last month, I told you of something that I've been working on um, for all of our friends that are just getting into embroidery and are really struggling to learn how to use their machine and how to do all the fun projects that we love to do. Um, and so I'm making a beginner course for machine embroidery, like all the basics, like bringing it all the way back to the beginning and going over everything that you need to know to get started. Everything I wish someone would have held my hand and told me when I decided to buy an embroidery machine and learn how to do it myself. Um, so good news is that course is like this close to being ready. So I am hoping to open the doors for enrollment on Monday, February 6th. So let me show you my pretty little picture. Where is it at? Here we go. So the course is called From Start to Stitch, and it's really taking you back from the start. So just to give you an overview of everything we're going to cover in the course, um, we're going to go over all the parts of your embroidery machine, how to thread it, how to change the needle, how to load the bobbin, how to wind a bobbin, all of those things. Now, I will be using a Brother PE800 for all of the demonstration port part of the course, but all of these basics can be applied to any machine. Okay, then we're going to have a detailed um, lessons on all the supplies you need and why you need them. We're going to dive into stabilizers and tell you what stabilizers you need for what project. We're going to go over hooping and then go into how to hoop specific items like shirts, bags, um, onesies, towels, all those things. I think I might even throw in a section on how to hoop a hat on a flatbed machine. Um, then we will go into the types of stitches and the types of designs that they have out there, filled stitch, sketch, um, and then applique, how to applique from start to finish. We'll have a brief um, lesson on embroidery software. We're not going to dive into it too much, but I'm going to give you a nice overview of what I use and why I think you need it. 
And then the last one is going to be a good one. That's going to be maintenance for your machine and troubleshooting. All those frequently asked questions that I get, something went wrong, how do I fix it? So I, um, I've been working really hard on this and I want it to be just right. I want it to be really good and helpful. So sign up enrollment will begin on Monday. But what the way this is going, since this is my first online course like this, and I want it to be good, um, when you sign up, you are going to get access to the first two modules. So that was um, the embroidery machine overview and the supplies needed. Now, just these two modules alone, I think, are a couple hours of video instruction. So you're getting a lot there. But... Um, when you sign up, you'll get access to those first two modules. And then after that, we're going to release a new module every week so that by the end of March, you'll have all nine modules done um, for you to watch. And we'll have live Q&A sessions in between some of those modules for people to ask questions because all the modules are going to be all pre-recorded and I wanted them to be to the point so you can find what you need and learn it. Um, but I'm very excited about it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I think I might do another live video ask, uh, answering questions about the course um, next week. But um, if you haven't already, if you're interested and you haven't already signed up for the wait list, um, I have a link um, to, to sign up to be on the wait list. And all that does is you will be the first person that gets emailed and notified that, hey, the course is open for enrollment now and you can go and sign up. I have a link for that down below, or you can always go to my website, carlybell.com, and they have it on the front page of the website where you can sign up for the waitlist. And then come Monday, it will change from a waitlist to sign up. <laughs> So very, very excited. All right, let me check the comments real quick. Oh, Norma said she's been, she's learned from watching me and Norma's been with me for years now. Um, and now people are paying her for her embroidery project. So thank you, Norma. I'm glad I have been helpful for you to learn. All right, let's see. Yeah, Doris, um, talking about the modules. Yes, um, they're... Um, on the waitlist sign up page, they got a lot more detail. So if you want to go look at that, um, you can see. Yay! Uh, thank you, Shana. Shana put the um, the link on the YouTube chat for the sign up. All right, yay! And Kristen saying she's so excited. I'm so excited too, guys. I can't. This is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and I keep pushing it off and pushing it off. And I was like, this is my year. 2023 is my year. We're going to get it done. All right. So yay, okay, so that was the course. So, because I'm all excited that the course is starting on Monday, I want to give one of you, my um, viewers that are watching live right now, at the end of today's video, we are gonna give one uh, admission to the course for free away today. So if you would like to be entered for the giveaway, um, all you have to do is like, comment, and share today's um, video that we're doing, whether it be on YouTube and share it on Facebook or you're on Facebook now, share it on your, um, your feed and then comment that you uh, shared and you will be automatically um, entered to win the giveaway. Let's see. Actually, I thought I set this up before I started. Let me make sure. Okay, here we go. All right, so yes, that's collecting all the entries now. So um, we'll give away one free ticket to the course at the end of today's show. Okay, what's next? Um, all right, the other announcement I had for you is that I am going to be live on Tuesday. What is that? February 7th um, with Kennedy over at Sewing Machines Plus for Takeover Tuesday. So. Um, that's going to be a really fun show. It is at 10 a.m. Pacific um, time or 12 um, Central time zone. And we'll be going over all the things you need to get started with embroidery. So if you're a newbie and you're just starting out, this will be a great show for you to watch. 
All right. So I think that's all my announcements. Thanks for bearing with me. Let's get to making some things. All right. So let me show you what I've been playing with for the past two weeks. <laughs> all right. Uh, what we are going to do today is embroider this heart, but we are going to fill it in with fluffy chenille yarn. So first off, this is typically used for crocheting. Okay, so this is going to be in your crochet yarn section of your local craft store. Um, the, it, the kind that I am getting is the thickest one I've seen on the shelf. And it is used to make these big blankets, which now I want to make one of these blankets since I bought this yarn. <laughs> and if you look at the label, the size is it needs a 25 millimeter crochet needle. Okay, so that's how big the yarn is. It's jumbo. So this one I got from Joanne, and that's this kind of rosy um, pink color. I got from Joanne. Then I noticed it's also at Walmart and it is the Mainstays brand sparkle chenille yarn. I also got some that's not sparkly um, and it has the same kind of label 25 millimeter. Um, this one has it as being six so I guess each brand maybe has its own um, system of numbering the thickness of it. But I think this is the common denominator is the 25 millimeter um, crochet needle. Now that's the thickest and that's what I have used for all my tests. Um, there are smaller yarns that you can get um, at the store. I didn't see like there was 25 and then the next one down I think was 10, um, which to me looked a little bit too skinny but I, I didn't buy it to try, so I can't say for sure, but it looked skinny. Um, somewhere else I saw them try a 15 millimeter um, yarn and that one looked to work really well. So if you can find a 15 millimeter, um, you may wanna try that. And I'm gonna tell you when maybe the skinnier one will come in handy. So this is what we're doing today, um, but I, I also, of course, changed my mind last minute. We're going to try something even funner. But this basic heart, you can go and download that for free right now. So in the description of this video, there should be a link to go download this design for free. And it's just a basic heart. However, it is special for the chenille yarn. And you'll see when we get to in brilliance why it's special um, in that it has programmed in stops so that it stitches a little bit and stops and stitches a little bit and stops. And so this allows you to maintain control over your yarn as it's stitching. You don't want it to try and go all in one swoop and it's too fast and everything. So I digitized it to where it goes and stops, goes and stops. Um, but you can go and get this heart for free. And so for this example, I stitched the heart and then I just used some fonts I had on my computer and I put be mine on the inside. Some other things that you can do is put love, you could put a kid's name, you can put a monogram, you could put just the first initial in a big pretty font. Lots of things that you can do on the inside of here if you would like to. So I did lots of tests. So we have this one, this. Now, if this is your first time trying this, I highly recommend you just hoop a piece of cutaway stabilizer and try it. So that way you're not wasting a shirt or material or anything like that. You need to practice first, okay? So just hoop a piece of cutaway stabilizer and try it out. All right, so this is me practicing and this is me practicing and this is, oh, this is another one. Okay, so this was another one I was playing with the first time. And I digitized love and I made it to where it stopped, like it stopped here and then it stitched and it stopped and so on. I learned some things when doing this one. Um, first off, do you see how it's cute, but it's very smushed together? Um, that is because the yarn is super thick. And this is, let's tell you how big it is. It is about eight inches wide. So 
you couldn't fit this on a, a two year old's shirt, right? If you wanted to put this on a on a on a kid's shirt, it's too wide. And so just imagine if it was smaller, it might be even more. It, it's almost too fluffy um, if you tried to stitch out anything smaller for a kid's shirt. That's when the skinnier yarn might come in handy. So depending on the size you're stitching, um, if it's something super small, the skinnier yarn might be better for you. The larger designs, the fluffy yarn looks good. Um, this was another heart. I did, I tried to do like a, not a normal shape heart, but I, I ended up liking the, this one better. Um, so that I put love in there just to play with. And then I think I'm gonna make myself a sweatshirt that says mama. So I played with that. Um, and then another one. So this is me playing. Now let's talk about machines. When I started, I did everything on the brother persona. And personally, when I started, I was thinking you have to use a machine that has like a free arm that's like a multi-needle or the persona because of the presser foot. And let me show you. Um, Okay, so this is the persona, and you see this is the free arm, and this is a single needle, but multi-needles are built the same way. But you see the presser foot, it's up here. When you're stitching, it's not like on a flatbed machine where you have to lower the presser foot and then it stitches. This is constantly going up and down, so I don't have to worry about this dragging on top of that thick yarn when it's stitching. However, I did want to test and see if... Um, if other machines would work. So the second machine I tested was my Baby Lock Altair, which is a really big flatbed um, machine. It's an, a sewing embroidery combo. On that machine, I know I have the ability to go in the settings of the machine and raise the presser foot. So if you have a flatbed single needle machine and you can go in your settings and raise the presser foot to be higher while it's stitching, do that. All right, that worked well, is when you raised it. <clears throat> the last test I did was on the Brother PE800, which is the machine I started off with and what a lot of people have. Um, on that machine, you do not have any capabilities of adjusting the presser foot height while it's stitching. Um, I checked in the settings, I couldn't find anything. Now, I wonder if it's a sewing embroidery combo. So if you have something like the SE1900, um, that's a combo machine, you might have that in your settings. So check, I don't have one of those machines so to, to test it out on. But needless to say, I did still stitch. I think it was this one. I stitched on the PE800. You are able to do it. You just have to watch the presser foot the whole time to make sure it's gliding on top of this thick fluffy yarn while it's stitching. So I just wanted to go over that. I think we can do this on any machine. The machines where you can't adjust the presser foot, it's a little bit trickier, but it can be done. Okay. And I'll show you on the persona, like whenever you think something's going wrong, just pause the machine, just stop it. But these design, the design I'm giving you and the ones I'm going to tell you about that some of my digitizing friends have released specific for yarn. They are made to where they only stitch a little bit and stop so that you not, things aren't getting out of control too fast. All right. So now let me tell you how I changed my mind this morning on what we're going to do. <laughs> so this is a basic heart. We're going to go in in brilliance and I'm going to show you, you know, how to open it and what it looks like. And if you want to add something, but I was scrolling on Facebook and one of the digitizers that released designs specific for this yarn is, oh, let me see. Was it all about applique? I think that was it. Um, I'll find their site after and post it in the description. She's made a few designs and one of them was a four leaf clover. And she filled the end, inside of the clover with cute Irish fabric. And I was like, oh, we could do that with the heart. So even though I didn't originally digitize this to be an applique, I'm going to show you how easy it is to turn it into an applique if you want to. So my idea this morning was to stitch this heart 
and fill it with this cute heart fabric that I found in my stash. And we're going to stitch this on. I thought I had a sweatshirt that fit my daughter's in my, you know, stash of blanks, but I didn't. So I just have a white long sleeve shirt. So that's what we're going to stitch it on today. So she's six. Um, so I have a six year old um, shirt and I'm going to do the eight inch um, heart on here for her and we'll fill it with this fabric. So any questions about the yarn or anything before we get started hooping the shirt? Let's see. All right, yes, Mary brought out a good point. Okay, so um, my friend Dawn at Creative Applique, yesterday she released a font specific for um, yarn, for the chenille yarn. So I will put a link for that when we're done, but you can go and buy the font, the whole alphabet, and then you can put together the word that you want to. So then you can go and do love or mama or um, lucky or something cute like that um, for using the font. So Creative Applique has it, and I know she's going to come out with more. And I want to say all about applique is the other one. All right. So uh, Shawna says you can raise the foot on the NQ 1600. So that's an embroidery only machine and it does allow you to adjust the foot. So yeah. Um, all right. Okay. So someone is talking about how we keep the yarn in place. I'm going to show you my trick of testing all week. Um, is there a special thread needed? No, I'm using my regular old 40 weight polyester embroidery thread and a 7511 needle. All right, so let's just get the shirt ready. Let me turn my iron on. Wake up iron. Okay, I have my shirt. And we're going to figure out placement and put stabilizer and all that good stuff. So I got my big iron on this morning. So I'm just gonna make sure that's nice and smooth and placement. So we're gonna do the eight inch heart. Um, I have an eight inch grid that came with my persona. Um, so I'm going to use that to figure out um, the center. So around 13, six and a half. Yep. And then I like it to be about almost like an inch and a half, two inches from the collar, the top of the design. So let's kind of eyeball it, make sure it's straight. Use my favorite fabric marker and mark all the little holes in the grid to make some crosshairs. All right. Yeah, someone, was, someone said, I love the fabric with the hearts. It's so cute, huh? I got this from All Stitched Up by Angela, one of her little fat quarters. Um, she had, it's a great shop. We have it locally. Um, and we used to have one in Metairie, but, uh, she closed that one now. She has just one location in Slidell, Louisiana. Um, if you ever pass through this way, go stop there. Um, but she's closed on Sunday <laughs> or she does have an online shop. So you can go and buy fabric from her online and she will mail you fat quarters if that's all you need. You can get that. And she has nice little bundles of fat quarters too. All right, turning the shirt inside out. And I'm gonna iron on fusible, no-show, cutaway stabilizer. And make it a little bit bigger than my crosshairs I made there. All 
Uh, LaDonna X, is that just the grid from my hoop? Yes. That, the, the machine I'm using today is the Brother Persona, and it is the one I showed you. So it's a single needle free arm, and um, the largest embroidery feel on that machine is eight by eight. So the machine came with an eight by eight traditional hoop. And that's where I got that grid from. If you don't have, if you have hoops that don't have grids, um, you can just use your ruler. Or another fun thing you can do is just print out the design from your embroidery software. And that will have crosshairs on it. And it prints true to size. So um, that really helps you figure out placement as well. All right, so I'm just ironing the poly mesh. And I have lots of videos on the stabilizers I use for shirts if you want to check any of them out. But I'm going to try to focus today's lesson mostly on the yarn. But speaking of the persona, I wanted to tell you something fun. Um, I'm working with Sewing Machines Plus, which I have been for a few years now. Um, that's where I got my persona from. And... I've always had it to where if you purchased a persona from them using my referral, I had a special Facebook group for you. Well, now even better, I'm working with them. Let me iron this again. Um, to offer owner's classes. So anyone that buys a persona, persona, I always say it wrong, uh, from Sewing Machines Plus or a Baby Lock Alliance, which is the same machine, but the baby lock version will get a zoom two day zoom class with me going over everything about your machine and how to use it. Um, so that's something new. If you are interested in getting a machine, um, the person that takes my referrals is Jean. Um, she's one of the, um, the people at the salespeople at sewing machines plus, and that is her phone number with her extension. So you could get directly to her. You can call her um, and tell her Carly um, referred you. And if you're interested in the persona, you know, tell her and then tell her, I'd like to sign up for the free owners classes to go with them. Okay. So that's something I'm very excited about. I'll be doing owners classes for the persona alliance for the Brother and Baby Lock six needle machine and for my big flatbed machine. I have the Baby Lock Altair that the Baby Lock Meridian is comparable. And they just released yesterday the Brother Stellaire, the two Stellaires, the one that's embroidery only and the one that's a combo machine. Those are comparable to my Baby Lock Altair. So I'll teach a class and all four of those machines um, can learn from that class. So that's gonna be the new free owner's classes um, through Sewing Machines Plus. All right. Thank you, thank you. Yep, so Linda just said, do I have class for the cellar? Yes. Yay. <laughs> um, all right, so we have the poly mesh hooped. I'm using my Durky Easy Frames today. So I'm going to turn this over and I use peel and stick tear away um, for this. Let me see. I don't need my mat anymore. And I'm not using my fabric scissors <laughs> to cut this. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to um, cut this so that it fits my frame. Actually, the rotary blade is even easier. And this is not my fabric rotary blade. So I could just do this. Did I cut it good? There we go. Um, so that is the sticky tear away. Um, Norma, this new class thing just started yesterday, uh, Wednesday, February 1st. Um, now I don't think you need a class, but if you purchased a machine previously from them, 
because this is something brand new they're offering, just call Jean or call um, one of the other people at Sewing Machines Plus and ask them how you can go about um, getting a class if you still feel like you need it. Okay. And then if you don't have any of those machines and you have the smaller machine, that's when my new From Start to Stitch course is going to be super helpful for you because it's going to go through everything if you have a smaller um, machine than the, the three big ones that I'm doing the owner's classes with at Sewing Machines Plus. All right. Now I'm going to use my ruler and mark the crosshairs here. Oh, yay. Linda said she joined my monthly club um, today. Thank you for joining. So I have a, a monthly membership called CF Fans. And I'm doing, uh, if you like this yarn stuff, I have an idea of what I want to do um, for one of my classes in my CF Fans class to take it like a step further. Um, but it's a monthly membership. Um, with the membership, it's $9 a month. And you get... Um, one private Zoom class with me a month and one free embroidery design. So last month, and we're going to continue working on, we are doing the Kimberbell Spring Showers Quilt. And we are working through like the difficult, the more advanced um, quilt blocks of that quilt. And that's what we're working on right now in our CF Fans group. And I could tell you that the free design for February is going to be a yarn one. <laughs> Let me do something fun. All right, so I am just lining up my marks that I made on my stabilizer to match my shirt. I just wanna make sure it's centered is the main thing. I could feel those little notches, yep. Okay, and once it's where I want it to be, I just um, push it down to the sticky. All right, so now I just put this on the adapter for my persona. Oops. And then we'll jump into in brilliance, and I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, so this is ready to go. No water soluble topper needed because the yarn. <laughs> All right, now, um, Judy says, is this available to watch later? Yes, so all of my videos are, are recorded live, but you can watch the replays on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page, okay? Um, Yes, Norma, we got to get into those clear blue tiles. I'm just checking the chat. All right. So now my screen's going to look crazy for a second, but I'm going to show you my um, in brilliance. Okay, there we go. Um, so you should be seeing my in brilliance screen right now. Hopefully you're seeing the whole thing. Um, I can't tell from my, my computer, sorry. <laughs> but... Uh, this is what we're going to stitch today. So this is the free heart design that you can go and download, right? Um, and I added love right here on the side. And I did one little trick to turn this into an applique. So let's look at the design itself. So this is what it looks like when you open it after you've downloaded it, okay? And let's look at the steps. Um, the first step is just a quick running stitch of the heart. And this is your placement line. This is going to show you where to put your yarn. All right. Then it's going to go in segments. So it's going to stitch. And here it's going to do a bean stitch. So it's going to go back and forth three times for each little um, stitch. So it's going to go here and stop. Now I've told the computer and the, the software that these are different colors so that the machine will stop. Because if I 
made this pink and made this pink too, when you go over to your machine, it won't stop stitching. So that's why everything's a different color. Um, so in segments, so we got this, then around the corner, then this long stretch is a little easier. Um, the curves are the ones that are a bit harder um, maneuvering the yarn and then around and here. So if we know the basics of applique is that you first have a um, placement stitch, right? Show you where to put your fabric. Then you have a tack down stitch so that you have your fabric there and it tacks it down and you trim it. And then you have your finishing stitch. So this first stitch is the same as a placement and a tack down. So all you have to do to turn this into a applique is to do this step two times in a row. Okay, so you can either do this at your machine, just load it up on the machine, stitch this, put your fabric on top, and then go back and stitch step one again. And that's your tack down stitch and trim your fabric. So you'll see when we get to the machine how that's done. If you want to do it in your software ahead of time, all you have to do is highlight this first step and hit copy and then hit paste. Now it is going to put it all the way at the bottom. So you need to highlight it and drag it up here. So now it's the second step. So it broke this up to look weird, but the first step is the placement. The second step is placement again. And now the third is all your segments. But one more thing you have to do before you save this is see this is black and this is black. If I went to my machine, it's not going to stop. It's going to stitch the heart twice. So I need to make the second one a different color. So I'll do this. All right. As long as it's not the same as this one, it has to be different. So it's always changing. All right. So it will stitch placement. This will be tack down and also guide you where to put your yarn. And then it does the segments. So that's if you want to turn this into an applique. And then if you want to do like I am and add some wording, we just go and press the lettering button up here. Um, type what you want it to say. And then choose the font. I think for the other one I did, it was a designs by Juju. I'll tell you exactly what it is in case you want to copy it. I think it was this one. Attitude script? Yeah, that's it. So des designs by Juju, attitude script, and I'm doing the three-quarter inch. So if we scroll in, here's the font. It's a script font, but it's not connected. So you can either um, close in the spacing, but sometimes that doesn't always get it how I want. So then I click on the individual letter and use the cursors on my computer to um, move it over. So now it's like that. And I want it to be over here. And I want to curve it. So I did like this. Now one thing to keep in mind because normally when something's stitching and I wanted uh, some more writing right here, I would have it fairly close. But remember this is going to be big old fluffy yarn on top of here. So if you do some wording on the outer edge like that, make sure you move it away so that the yarn is not covering it up when it's stitched. All right. Let me know. Let me go back to the chat. All right. What, did all that show up good on the screen? Um, Okay, Joe's asking about in brilliance classes. So that my plan, Joe, is once the beginner embroidery course is done and um, and good, the next course I think I'm gonna release is going to be an embrilliance course where we'll go into like a lot of details about embrilliance and then do like an advanced embroidery um, stuff after that. All right. Let's see. I said, y'all are still talking about clear blue tiles. Yes, we can do some clear blue tiles. I have to buy the, the big pack first. So I still just have the few that came with my um, perfectly pieced box. Um, okay. So Patricia asks, how does the yarn hold up in the wash? 
This is something I personally have not tested yet, but I've seen other people test and it seems to hold up fine. Okay. Um, but I will let you know once I wash this shirt because <laughs> everything I've done has been little test pieces and not anything that I could actually throw in the wash. Um, so Brenda asks, how far will the beginner course go into embroidery? It's going to, the beginner course is going to be all your basics. Um, tell you all about stabilizer, how to hoop. Then we'll go into all the different kinds of um, stitches there are. We'll have some test projects um, to stitch out, how to hoop things, how to applique. So the things I'm not going to cover in the beginner course is like in the hoop projects or something more complicated like this with the yarn or um, like zippered bags, things like that, that I think are a little bit more advanced. Those I'm not going to cover in the beginner course. So it's going to be a true beginner from, you know, that someone that has never embroidered before or has tried to and is pulling the hair out like I did. <laughs> all right. Yay. Um, all right. Pam's asking how to sign up. There is a wait list um, a link um, below this video that gives you all the information about it and you can sign up to be on the wait list and you will be the first notified when I open doors, which should be on Monday, February 6th. Oh yes, society, I totally agree with you. This yarn would be so pretty on embellishing pillows for your couch. That I'm definitely going to do. Okay, all right, so that was in brilliance. And what I'm thinking for my CF fans group, I'm going to do a class on how you can take, maybe you have some designs you already purchased, some bean stitch designs that you already purchased um, from different digitizers. I'm going to show you how you can take that design you already have and turn it into one that is yarn friendly. And then for those friends of mine in the CF fans membership group that have stitch artists and are learning to digitize themselves, I'm going to show you how to digitize something that is yarn friendly. So that stay tuned for that. And the CF fans membership group, we're going to go a little deeper into the yarn and it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Um, okay. Norma. Asking what embroidery, I have all the embroidery modules, but um, what we did just now, that all can be done with essentials. Um, let's see. Uh, Brenda asked, when will the price be released on the course? So I could tell you the price, I have an intro price. So when the course is released next week, and it's only going to be open for a week, um, it's going to close on Friday. Uh, I'm have an introductory price of $77 and it will close. And then when I open the course up again, probably in May, um, the price will go up. So if you're interested, you will save some money if you sign up now. All right. Barb is asking, do you have to take this first class in order to take the course about in brilliance later? No, totally separate up to you. Don't take what you don't need. So I know I have a lot of friends on here that, you know, know the basics. They got that. Um, like Norma's, Norma's been following me for years. So she, she got it. Um, so when those advanced courses come out and the embrilliance courses come out, you know, just get what you need. All right. So let's go to the machine. All right. I got it really zoomed in on the machine today so that you can see up close what we're doing. So step number one, load your design and load your shirt make sure the whole of the shirt is going through the free arm <laughs> so that you don't stitch the shirt to itself so i can see down here i can feel everything is good i have my design already loaded on my machine i could see my little laser pointer is not quite where I want it to be. So I'm going to put it there. All right. Now, because I'm using a Durkee Easy Frame, this is not a frame that came with my machine. 
it's very, very important that you trace your design before you start stitching. All right, so to trace, I have a button, I'm pressing and I can see right where the design is gonna fall, not going anywhere near um, my metal frame. Let me make sure the top is not gonna be too close. No, perfect. Okay, so that looks great. All right, so traced and ready. I have thread loaded. I have this rose gold thread. I'm gonna leave that on there. I'm gonna change it after. And I'm going to lock the machine and stitch. And now this first stitch is your placement. So because I changed this to an applique, this is my placement for my material or it's placement for your yarn if you don't wanna do the applique part. Um, Tip number one with sewing with yarn, slow your machine down to the slowest setting it can go. All right, so my machine, the fastest it could go is 1,000 stitches per minute. I have it slowed down to 400 stitches per minute. Um, if you have the PE 800, it can go down to 350 stitches per minute. Um, uh, no, I need my little iron now. Okay, turn that on. Let's go back to the craft table. All right, so here is our placement stitch. So like I said, I changed my mind. So that's what I do, or I get ideas. The problem is it's like, oh, we could do this and we could do that. And I'm sorry for complicating things, but I think it's really fun. All right, so I have my fabric. I already ironed it and I ironed on heat and bond light on the back of here, okay? So that is a um, fusible interfacing that kind of turns this into double-sided adhesive, um, which is what I totally, I recommend you use on every applique project you use. So it has this paper backing that after you ironed it and it's cooled off, you can peel the paper backing. And so now you've exposed the shiny adhesive is now on the back of this fabric. So when we're done tacking it down and trimming, we can iron this so now that applique piece will become fused to the shirt. All right, so let's go back over to the machine. And now you're repeating step one. If you didn't set it up in Brilliance already, just press the needle plus minus button and back up a step and do step one again. So it goes right over where it went before. So just making sure my fabric is covered up where I want. Okay, I made it to where we repeated it in the design so I don't need to back up. And now it's going to redo that. Now for these, that first step, you can leave your machine going fast. Um, I just slowed it down so I wouldn't forget to slow it down when it's important. All right, so let's go back to the table and trim this. Okay, let me make sure. All right, so this is our heart and it's a little bit hard to see. The, the stitch that happened. Let me get my trash bin. All right, and I use my favorite applique scissors. I, sh I should have linked those, yeah. They should be in the supplies link. So um, whenever I do sip and stitch projects, if, you, if you're new here, um, I have a website. So my website's carlybell.com, but I have a special part, come on mouse, um, that is the, sip and stitch homepage. So carlybell.com slash slash sip and stitch. And um, that will tell you what project we're doing next. I usually try to update it by the Monday before and tells you all the supplies you need for this project. So on there, if you go now, you'll see I've 
I put links to the yarn that I could find where you can see it or buy it online. I put the link to get the free heart design download. I put links to sweatshirts because I thought I was doing a sweatshirt today. <laughs> um, and then my stabilizers, my scissors, my marker, all that good stuff. Um, you'll see on the Sip and Stitch homepage. See, excuse me for a second. Okay. Okay, so now what's going to happen is you're gonna keep the raw edge of this fabric is happening, right? But the heat and bond light is gonna prevent it from fraying. However, the raw edge of this fabric is going to get covered up with the yarn, so you won't even see it. So now that I have um, it trimmed all good, let me put my ironing mat back down and try to lay this kind of flat. Okay, and I got my little Cricut um, mini press. Wait, let me get this thing off of here so you can see. All right. Um, or if you have like a little travel iron and you are now activating that heat and bond light on the back of your heart fabric. So you're adhering it to the shirt. And depending on what hoop you're using, um, just watch that you're not pulling your item out the hoop um, when you're ironing. Not messing up your hooping. Okay, so that is good. Now, here comes my trick. So if you've been following along this fun new process, you will see that it's tricky to get the yarn to stay into place, right? So I'm gonna tell you the things that I've tried and what I like the best. When I first started, I took the yarn and I put it right here. Oh, this is gonna be cute. Um, and I used my paper Kimberbell tape and I tried to just, I taped the whole thing. It did not work that great. The tape wasn't staying, things still got shifted. Okay, other things I've seen is using spray adhesive. Um, the spray adhesive works, but it's not my favorite because it gets everywhere. So it's gonna get, if you spray it on the shirt, it's gonna be all over your shirt. Granted, you wash the shirt after, but if this is something you're giving as a gift or you're selling, you don't wanna have spray adhesive all over it. Um, you could spray the yarn is another idea, but what I have found and I like the best is I thought about things I see people use in sewing, and that is this water soluble temporary double sided basting tape. So I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I put a link to it. It's on Amazon too. Um, this one's made by Singer. I looked for something that was low adhesive that you can stitch through just like you can stitch through heat and bond light and the the paper um, tape um, and it's water soluble so that when this gets washed that little bit of tape will get washed away um, and this literally makes it to where I do not need to put my fingers or anything anywhere in here while this is stitching now I will use my stiletto but when I first tried doing like the love and all that, I was in there like holding the yarn like this while it was stitching. And that is just not safe. You do not want to be holding things and have your hands in there. No, 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 no. Now, because this has curves, I end up cutting a lot of little pieces. So this is like double-sided tape for sewing. It's amazing. And so I'm just going to cut a bunch of little pieces. I'm sorry, I might be slow at this. Okay, so as I'm pulling this off, like this side is sticky, it's sticking to my fingers. Okay. 
All right, and then when we get here, we could probably use long pieces. So for starters, I'm gonna put one here, right where, and let me get in a little closer for you. So you can see this. Um, I put a little piece of tape here, here, and just kind of going around the heart every bit. And then like this piece here, I can do a long straight piece. And just press it firmly with your finger. And put your hand underneath it if you're worried about messing up your hooping. Um, and then you peel off the top paper part, just like um, the heat and bond light. And it can be a little tricky, but the, the tape should stay and it's kind of clear. And there you go, double-sided like that. So that is what we're doing. Let me just finish going around here. See, Norma says she uses this tape when she puts in zippers. Yeah. And remember this tack down line? That is your guide. That is telling you where to put your tape. That's right where it's going to stitch. And that's where you want your um, yarn to be. So, ah. Uh, not sticking as good to the fabric like it did when I tested all this. It was just on cutaway. But there we go. Let me see if my tweezers are better at getting it um, separated. There we go. Sorry again for being slow. <laughs> I'm slow at everything in life. So I'd rather do this and it be a little bit tedious than be freaking out the whole time at stitching that my yarn is not where I want it to be. Also, oh, I wanted to tell you, I saw another trick that might work. I'd never tried, but my friend Dawn at Creative Applique told me what she does is she uses just Elmer's glue, um, like my kids' glue sticks for school, and she runs it along the stitch line to help hold down the glue. So that's another idea for you. That's from Dawn at Creative Applique. All right, so I have my adhesive exposed. I'm going to pull it to where I have a little bit more than I need here. And I will cut that after it stitches. And now I'm just pressing my yarn so that it is sticking right on top of that double-sided tape. When I get to the point here, I'm gonna hold it with my finger and pull so that I don't have any slack in it right there. And then come around. I'm gonna wait to stick this part down when I get to that section, but I'm just cutting so that I have extra. I'm gonna leave this out of the way. So that is it. This is what works for me and what I think is a great solution 
to keep your yarn in place and keep your fingers out of the sewing field. Any questions before I go back to the machine and we stitch this? Thank you, Brenda and LaDonna. They're both reassuring me that it's okay that I'm slow. Take my time. <laughs> um, Cindy's asking, I wonder if fabric glue stick would be sticky enough to work. Could you just try it out. All we can do is try it out. All right. Okay, I don't see any other questions, so let's go to the machine. Name of the tape. So the double-sided tape is from Singer, and it's temporary basting tape. And I found it on Amazon, and I put a link for it on the Sip and Stitch homepage. But I picked mine up at Hobby Lobby. Okay, so Christine has some, um, some suggestions for us. Washable double-sided tape we can purchase from RNK either quarter inch or half inch. So yeah, this is um, a quarter inch wide. Um, but they have steam ones too. That should work. Thank you. All right, let's go to the machine. All right, so I got my little stiletto. And now this is where we're going to work in sections. Okay, just keep that out the way. So we can see where it's going to start stitching. And it's going to go to right here and stop. So I am going to hit unlock oh, lock and go. Oh, wait, I didn't want it to change this red. Cut. Close. I have a thread color that uh, it probably wouldn't see it, but I do have a teal kind of matchy thread color so that you can hide the stitches. They do, it is really forgiving and it does sink in there really good. So you really shouldn't see the stitches. However, I did pull that thread specific <laughs> for this. So let me put it on. And then I was going to do the little love on the side in a hot pink. Okay. I just tied it at the top, pull it through, press my needle threader. Get the needle. Okay, now I got what I want. I'm going to Start this over just so that we don't miss those couple stitches. Okay, lock and go. All right. So I got my machine going slow and my yarn is right where I want it to be. So almost with this method, you, you kind of, it's still good to have the breaks, but it's not as necessary compared to other methods I've seen. So if we just leave the same thread on, lock and go again. Now it's gonna go around another section. And you see what I'm saying where this presser foot goes up and down high? That is keeping it from dragging against this yarn. So you'll see when you play on your flatbed machine, the pressure foot drags on it the whole time. So that's when your little stiletto is gonna come in even more handy to make sure your um, thread, your, um, your yarn is going underneath your presser foot nicely. And the stitches don't have to go right in the middle of the yarn. It is pretty forgiving. But that's kind of where I'm guiding it, where I want it to go. And you could kind of see the, the line here. Um, and we can fluff that up when we're done and you won't even see where those stitches were. So I'm just moving on. Okay, so while it's right here, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything ready for the end. Let me get my scissors. Where's my scissors? Here we go. So 
while it's right here, I'm going to go ahead and trim this. And you'll see it kind of frays a little bit, but then it stops. Um, if you're worried about it, also you could put a little bit of fray check right here. Um, but, all right, pulling up that last piece of tape. And I will let this tail happen over here. Um, and I'll trim that after. Okay, I think I'm done and ready. So now we're gonna go around. Sorry, I can't see any questions or comments right now because um, I'm not by my computer, but I'll check them when I get back. All right, and then the last little bit. You can see the tape, it just keeps it nice in place. Now this is a little bit thicker here, but it goes through it well. And then when we get back to the craft table, I'll trim that. All right, so now let's do the love. And like I said, I wanted to do that in a pink color. So let me put that thread on. Okay, pull thread. Okay. Nope, I messed it up. When I pulled it too much. Let's try that again. right and I think it should be to where the top of the L is going to be right by the yarn I'm gonna move the yarn a little bit in case it's close to it but let's see how I did with my spacing yay that looks good So now it's just gonna stitch the love. I do normally like to use a water soluble topper with satin stitches on knit cotton, but I didn't have it ready, so we're just stitching. But if you're getting all your stuff together and you wanna do some satin writing, get a little piece of water soluble topper um, for that section. It'll help your satin stitches come out better. Oh, and also let me, we don't need to work slow anymore. Still not full speed. It makes me nervous when I increase the speed <laughs> while it's stitching because it's like, oh, it's going fast. But this is at 800. It still can go to a thousand, but I'm, I'm not gonna press it no more. But you can see how much slower we were going with the yarn. There we go. That's pretty. Okay, back to the craft table. So let me raise you up a little bit now. Okay, um, wait, I left my scissors. Okay, so now I'm just gonna trim this and watch you see these little, these little pieces. Usually I just pull at it and pull at it and pull at it and then it stops and that's it. But um, 
if you're worried, you can put a little bit of fray check. I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm gonna wash it and I'm gonna see how it does um, in the wash without worrying about those edges. But that's it guys. So you could see kind of where it's stitched. Like you can see that line right there and you could just go and, and fluff it up. But like you could see, it's very forgiving. Cause like I was like way over here and then came over here <laughs> just because of the way I had my, my yarn um, put down. So it's not, it doesn't have to um, stitch that straight line. Now, when you, if you use the um, skinnier yarn, it might, it's not going to be as forgiving. So make sure that skinny, if you use the skinnier yarn, you're really getting it right on your um, placement um, stitches. Oh, this is funny, LaDonna, this is true. So we'll see when, when Elise wears this, um, she's gonna be rubbing her, her shirt all day. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to be doing the same thing when I make myself one. Um, yay, so I'm glad y'all love it. So I am just, let's take this off here. And this is Tearaway. So I don't think I'm going to try and save this one because I pulled out of the lot. But normally I'll try to make a hole um, in my stabilizer and, and patch it and use it again, but this one's too big. So I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. I'm just tearing out the, um, the frame. Let's see, I didn't get it all, but I was tearing it out of there. So if we turn this inside out, we can tear the sticky tear away it comes off pretty easily from the um because it's just stuck to the poly mesh i'm not super particular with making sure every little piece is done however because this is one giant piece in the middle i am going to take this one out let's see if i can get it get it started a little hole without cutting my shirt This might be harder than I thought. I thought this was going to be easy. That's my shirt. So I went through the... There we go. I went through the poly mesh right there when I was pulling. Lots of times when I do designs and um, I, I combine the, um, I still don't think I have it all, the poly mesh and the uh, tear away. I usually just pull away the tear away like from the outer edge and I don't worry about little bits and pieces on the inside. But since this was such a large piece, I'm trying to get it. There we go. Yeah, I didn't think I was getting it all. There we go. Tweezers. Love my tweezers. They come in handy for all kinds of stuff. Okay. So once you get all that done, I normally trim my poly mesh too. Pull this in a little. <laughs> okay, and for those of y'all that are joining late, since we're almost done here, don't forget if you like, comment, and share on today's live video, um, you will automatically be entered in a giveaway that I'm holding. And the prize is a ticket to 
my online course, a beginner and machine embroidery course, which I'm releasing on Monday called from start to stitch. So one lucky person is going to get a free, um, ticket to join that class. And I'm excited. All right. So I just trim around the outer edge. Make sure you don't trim your shirt on accident. And then I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to iron this and then add some um, Fuse So Soft on the back, which is this. And it's a fusible, um, soft interfacing that covers up these stitches. So this particular shirt doesn't have a lot of stitches, especially if you just did the heart. Um, there's no nothing really rough to rub on the kid's skin, but if you have particular children like I do, um, I iron that on top of this um, to cover to cover it up. So let's see our final product. And we got to get the placement marks out. So here we go in the cute. Let me get my tie pin. So you can um, spray this with a lot of water or um, it will just go away with exposure to air over time or throw it in the wash and these little purple marks will go away. Um, but I always use a Tide pen to get them out because I'm impatient and I want them gone now. All right, so oh, I got the runny nose today. All right, so here we go. Here is our cute yarn, chenille yarn design. We turned it into an applique. I love it. It's so cute. And then you could you could have stitched something on top of your fabric um, in the applique if you wanted to. There's so many fun things that you can do with this. So I hope this tutorial helped you. We learned about the kind of design you want to have where it kind of starts and stops. You have a placement to where you want to put your yarn. You can use double sided um, tape that's special for sewing, light adhesive. This one's water soluble um, to hold your yarn in place, slow your machine down as slow as it can go. Um, and then you are all set. Now, remember I showed you this on the Persona with the presser foot going up and down. If you're using a flatbed machine and you can raise the height of your presser foot, raise it as high as it can go so that the yarn goes smoothly. If you have a PE 800 or a machine where the presser foot height is not adjustable, that's when your little stiletto is going to come in handy. And I just kind of hold it right in front as it's stitching, kind of hold in that yard down to make sure it slides nice and um, even underneath it as it's stitching. And that's the one also where it's very helpful where starts and stops, starts and stops, so that you have um, that time to adjust your yarn and make sure it's, it's running smoothly under the presser foot. All right. And then, so this heart design is free for you to download. There's a link um, below the video. Even if you're watching the replay later, you can always go and download this free design. This will be available forever for you. Um, and lots of, it comes in as small as four by four and as big as eight by eight. So I have it four by four, five by seven, six by 10, and eight by eight is four different sizes it comes in. And then all the different embroidery uh, formats depending on what kind of machine you have and if you want to have some fun with it you can add lettering you can turn it into an applique just by repeating step one just repeat it again um, you could put something uh, cute in the middle so lots of fun things that we can do so I hope y'all like it all right any questions Yay. All right. I'm glad y'all like it. Um, yes, uh, definitely. Joyce, try it on a onesie. That'd be fun for a baby. That would be like sensory uh, play for a baby all day. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, 
All right. Yay. I'm glad y'all like it. So um, that it, I'm, I'm digging this a lot. Like I, I, my mind is going a hundred miles an hour, which it always does with the things that we can do with this. Um, I loved um, Joe's idea earlier, putting it on pillows. Um, and then I think it looks really cute on sweatshirts. Um, I want to make, uh, I, it's Mardi Gras right now in New Orleans and, um, our, this is something weird. I guess other cities probably do this too, but lots of stuff with in New Orleans has 504, which is our, um, area code. I was going to make myself a 504 sweatshirt with purple, green, and gold yarn. Um, <clears throat> just because Mardi Gras was too big. Like I wanted, I wanted something where I could use that really fluffy yarn, but it'd be big and, and spaced where it wasn't all close together. Um, so I might do something like that. Um, let's see. So <clears throat> someone asked uh, about the, the font. So creative applique. Um, I'm going to go and add the link in the description box when we're done. She released a font yesterday and that one is the, just the capital letters, I think. And I think she has intentions of releasing a cursive font later. Um, and then all about applique. Let me double check. I'm remembering the name of that shop before I tell you the wrong thing. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. That's a quilting website. Was it? Oh, I'm going to mess it up. Um, let me look. Does anyone know the other shop that sells them? I know. Uh, so um, my friend Kelly, the embroidery nurse, she did a video making a cute sweatshirt. She used their design. That's the shop I'm talking about all things applique maybe all things applique let's try that ah that's it all things applique they have they have one that says mardi gras they have one that says love they have the shamrock um they have an x xo xo they have a heart there you go um so lots of cute stuff um, on, I already forgot it, allthingsapplique.com. <laughs> um, so you could check them out. Yes, Ashley got it. Um, she's got some cute things. And I'm sure this trend is going to catch on even further. And so we should be seeing all of our favorite um, digitizers releasing a little something um, that we can use with yarn. However, my head keeps twir twirling. I have ideas on how we can take designs that we already have, that we already have in our stash folder full of embroidery designs that we purchased that we haven't stitched yet. Um, those bean stitch designs, we can turn them into yarn. And I'm going to teach how to do that in my CF fans membership group. And if you are learning or want to learn how to digitize, I'm going to teach how you can digitize some fun, simple things to be yarn friendly when you're embroidering. So all of that's going to be coming soon to the CF fans um, group. If you're, sorry, my camera blinks. Oh, sorry. Um, if you are interested uh, in becoming a member, it's only $9 a month. You'll get um, a Zoom class with me every month on a different subject. Um, I have uh, a free design for you every month. And when you join, you get access to all of the previous month's designs and classes. It's all in the, uh, a vault that I have. So when you sign up today, you get two years worth of classes and designs um, that you can go through and find all kinds of good stuff. So I have a link for that down below if you're interested in joining. All right. So Tracy said, what is a bean stitch? A bean stitch was the stitch that you see for the heart. So that's just a basic running stitch, super, the simplest stitch that we have. That's a bean stitch. All right, yay, thank you, Christine. She just joined. Linda says, best $9 spent. You're so sweet, so sweet. Um, what is Dawn's website? It is um, Creative Applique. 
creative appliques with the S on the end. Um, Dale's asking if we do things on the PE 800 in the membership. Yes, we do. I change it up a lot in there just like I do on the YouTube channel. Um, okay, so Shirley's asking, how do we think this is going to wash? We're going to find out. So I've heard from others that this washes well, but I am going to actually, I'll go put it in the wash today and I can uh, post on Facebook and let you know how it turns out. Um, cause I have some laundry I need to go do. <laughs> so I'll just throw this in there with it. Um, but I will definitely keep you updated, um, on, on my Facebook page. And I have a Facebook group that's free for anyone to join. It's a really great community of people that are so helpful and nice. Um, when you have a question, you can go, um, ask, I'm always in there, um, answering people's questions. And then everyone else in the group is super helpful too. So if I don't get to you, someone else usually gets there first. Um, so come join the Facebook group. I'll post the results of washing um, in there so you can see how it goes. Um, Cassie's asking if I ever train on a 10 needle. Yes, I have a Recoma 10 needle. And I do have videos on that. And then I have a special Facebook group for people that purchase a Recoma with my referral link. We have a private Facebook group um, where I have some trainings in there as well. All right. Yay. Okay. So who's ready for a giveaway? Yay. All right. Um, let's go. How do I do this? We are going to share screen and we're going to go to the giveaway tool, share. All right. So you should be seeing the giveaway tool. So we have 142 entries. So let's see who's going to win a free ticket to my beginner embroidery course called From Start to Stitch, which opens doors on Monday. Kathy, <laughs> Kathy probably does not need this course, <laughs> but Kathy, I'll tell you what, um, you'll have access to it. If you have a friend that is just getting into embroidery, um, that, uh, you want to share your free course with, you can do that. Okay. All right. Thank y'all so much. So I will be back. I will be on Sewing Machine Plus YouTube and Facebook on Tuesday for Takeover Tuesday with Kennedy. We're going to be going over all my favorite tools um, and stabilizers and everything that you need to get started with embroidery. Um, we'll be talking about the new owners classes that I'm offering with them. And then I'm also going to talk more about the From Start to Stitch beginner class um, for that show. So that's going to be fun. And then for Sip and Stitch, I will be back um, two Fridays from now, February 17th. Um, will be again 10 30 a.m. Central Time, and we're going to do something Mardi Gras themed because that is actually the Friday before Mardi Gras. And my kids are off of school, so I can't promise we won't have interruptions, <laughs> but we're going to do a fun project that is Mardi Gras themed. Um, stay tuned to the Sip and Stitch homepage um, where I post what we're doing and the supplies you need. Also, if you like to stay updated on all the things that I'm teaching and have videos on and all fun stuff. I do send out a weekly email newsletter um, sharing all that fun stuff that if you're not um, getting and would like to sign up for, I have a link down below just to sign up for the email newsletter. It's free and um, it tells you all of the videos and everything that I'm doing, the upcoming projects. And when I find good sales, I post it in there. Um, and I sometimes share embroidery tips or designs I'm digging. So fun stuff um, on the email newsletter, and that's completely free if you want to sign up for. All right. Yay. Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to embroider with fluffy chenille yarn. Remember, you can go and grab this heart design download for free um, forever. So if you're watching the replay, go grab it. Um, and I will see y'all next time. Okay. Bye guys.